somebody and praise his holy name. Lord, we lift you up. We bless the name of the Lord. We just want to welcome you to Second Chance live stream today. We're glad for those of you that are here in the congregation. And we thank God for Minister Jerome and our musicians. And we just thank God for you streaming in live. We want you to share with somebody today. We are excited about the goodness of God and what he's doing. God is an awesome God. I want to read the scripture today right now. Psalms 100 um, says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Shall we have a word of prayer this morning? Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here in service this morning. We ask you to be with uh, Deacon Frazier and the loss of his sister. We ask you to be with Marshall. Larry and Minister Winfrey and uh, 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 Attorney Scott and we could just go on and on naming those that uh, we thank you for healing and thank you for delivering. Lord, we just ask you to touch us right now as we move on further into worship service. And we just give you all the glory and all the praise for everything that you've done and for everything that you're going to do, Lord. We say thank you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Just a couple of little short announcements today. Uh, again, we want to remind you that we do the food drive uh, every Tuesday uh, starting at 10 o'clock here at the church at 2070 Coldwater Road, and then we do one on Fridays at Hallwood Plaza. Again, we want to thank all of our volunteers uh, that come out and help us, uh, all of the partnerships that we have. And if you want to sow and you're not here in this city and you want to be a part of what we do in this community, uh, you can go on our page and uh, there's something called Recovery. It's a recovery cash app and you can make a contribution to Second Chance Church. Uh, to help us to buy masks, to buy pampers, and to do what we do in the community. We appreciate everything you do. We appreciate your prayers. Next Sunday, if weather is permitted, we're going to have an outside service. My church family has asked me about having an outside service, and so we need some volunteers to show up. We ask you to bring your own. It's going to be a social distancing outside service as weather permits. And when I say if weather permits, it can't be too hot or it can't be raining or we're going to be inside. Let everybody say amen. Amen. <laughs> so what we're asking you to do is bring your own chairs if you're going to sit outside because we're not putting chairs out. We ask you to bring your own chairs. We ask you to social distance or stay in your vehicles. And uh, service will start at 12 as well. If you want to join Second Chance Virtual Church, all you have to do is put it online where you're sharing and let us know you want to join us and how we can reach you. And we will get back out to you and we will pray with you. We would love to have you in whatever town, state, city that you might be in. If you're not here, we would love to have you to be a part of our church family. And amen, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. We're going to go back to uh, Minister JT, and then we're going to come right back with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church family. We do know in times like these, we have to rely on the strength of the Lord. Amen. We know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and he keeps us every day. Hallelujah. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, you are Strength 
Back to Jonah, we're going to end in chapter 1 and go right into verse chapter 2 of Jonah. Amen, amen, amen. So the 17th verse of chapter 1 says, But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. And then starting in verse 2, and we've been going through, we went through the whole first chapter of Jonah. Going through, starting in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, In my distress, I called on the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very hearts of the seas and the currents swirl about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountain I sank down. The earth beneath me forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, oh Lord. Somebody ought to thank God for that. You brought my life up from the pit, oh Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you. 
to your holy temple. For a few minutes, I want to talk about when the Father disciplines you or a prayer of thanksgiving. Because in the second chapter, I, 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 I see a different Jonah. In chapter one, I see a, a Jonah who is disobedient. The Bible says that Jonah ran away from the Lord. But now in chapter two, it says that Jonah prayed unto God. Something happened in his life that changed him from running from God to, to praying to God. It's amazing how a good whipping will change your mind. And there's a difference between your, when your mother or father whips you. Because when your mother or father whips you, they're whipping you to get you to change your mind about something you did. But when God gives you a whipping, it's to change your life. And I just want you to know from experience that God's whipping will change your life or take you out. And, and in chapter 2, verse 2, says that in my distress, I called to the Lord. Let, let me give you a witness about whippings. Come here, David. They will tell you that God will whip you. David committed adultery by taking another man's life. And after sleeping with his wife, he had that man killed. So he knew that God was going to whip him. So when he talked to the Lord, he said, whip me with your tender mercies. Have you ever had a whipping from God? It will sap the energy out of you. It will steal your joy. David's whipping got so bad that he lost his joy. And he prayed to God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. There's somebody listening right now that's getting a whipping for being disobedient. How many of you have parents that used to promise you a whipping when you got home? My mother used to tell me she was going to get me when I got home, and, and I was nervous the rest of the time, and I prayed to the Lord at that time that she would forget. And that's why some of us, when we were having church service, some of us would not sit still and listen. We would be distracted by our phones and by what, we're, what we were going to do after service. Then you had those that would come to church to go to sleep. Like they couldn't sleep at home. And it's because a lot of times we don't want to hear what God is trying to tell us. Because a lot of us don't want anybody telling us what to do. So, so you won't sit still and, and you won't listen. But a whipping will make you change your mind. I, and, and, I, and some of you don't believe me, but I want you to turn to Luke 12, 47 if you have your Bibles at home. And I want to show you what Jesus said about whippings this morning. I want, I want Jesus gives us a, 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 a statement about whippings. I need everybody that's live streaming this morning to, 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 to look at Luke 12 and 47. 12 and 47. I'm going to give you a moment to get there. says that the servant who knows his master, the master's will, and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants, will be, be beaten with many blows. What Jesus is saying is that it will cost you when you know what to do and you don't do it. And I hear some of you saying, well, I don't know and I don't want to know, so I won't get any whippings. But verse 48 says, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with a few blows. Jesus says a lack of knowledge is no excuse. You still won't get a whooping. And then verse 48 says, 49 says, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. And so God got Jonah's attention. And that's what God specializes in, getting your attention. Verse 17 says, the Lord provided a, a great fish. And I just want you to know that God can use anything he wants. When Balaam wanted to curse the children of Israel, God spoke out of the mouth of a jackass. And when the jackass got through talking, Balaam was convinced that God does speak. When God wanted to touch the heart of Simon Peter, he, he spoke through a rooster. And when that rooster crawled, that rooster reminded Peter that God did just what he said he was going to do. My Bible says that Elijah was hungry and there was a drought in the land. So God spoke to the ravens and the ravens brought Elijah meat and bread to feed him. And if God can use a rooster, if God can use a jackass, and if God can use ravens, certainly God can provide a fish to get Jonah's attention. My Bible says that Jonah was inside the fish three days and and three nights. Now in chapter 1 verse 15 of Jonah, Jonah says, and Jonah wrote this, 
Jonah says that the sailors threw him overboard. But if you look at verse 3 in chapter 2, Jonah has changed his mind because in his prayer, look what he says. He says, you, God, hurled me into the deep. Sometimes we have the audacity to blame other people for our misfortunes. Sometimes we say that he or she is the cause of what you're going through. But you need to check with the Lord. Because verse 3 says, you, you hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All you waves and breakers swept over me. It, it was the whipping of God that caused Jonah to pray. And then in verse 4 he says, I say it. I have banished, been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. That word temple is a Hebrew word meaning sanctuary or the place where God is. Jonah says that I'm in a terrible situation, but I woke up this morning with church, with God on my mind. And if you've ever been sick, if you've ever been in a storm and couldn't get to church, you know what I'm talking about. You can get happy just thinking about church. You see, because worship, worshiping God is the best place that you can be right now in your life. You might be listening and not get anything out of this message. The praise team might not impress you. You may not get anything out of praise and worship or the scriptures. But right now, you know that somebody else is live streaming with you and they're making comments and you're making comments and you're still in contact with each other. You're still connected with one another. And when you think about your brothers and sisters in Christ and you reflect back on the storms that some of them have been through and some of them that might be going through right now, but you can see them saying hallelujah. You can see them praising the Lord because you can see about somebody online today that know that they had heart surgery before and the Lord delivered them. You'll see somebody else live streaming today that's been evicted from their home and you're at home complaining about your house no do. You'll see somebody online that just lost a loved one but they're still praising God. Listen, we still, God is still giving us an opportunity to praise him together as a corporate body so somebody ought to thank God for that this morning. Jonah says, in the midst of all the things that I've been through, I've got church on my mind. The reason I got church on my mind is because I found forgiveness at church. It was at church that I met mercy. It was at church that I found my healing. That's why somebody said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. We find Jonah in this, in this dilemma. But what's unusual, unusual is that he, he's thanking the Lord. Because most of us, when we're in a crisis, we spend time complaining. We complain about how we are treated and how we're mistreated. We're complaining about, I don't have this and I don't have that. But the Lord says, I already know about you. and I already know what you're going through. The Lord says, I know where you live. I know your zip code. I know your address. I know that your gas hand is sitting on E this morning. I checked your checking account before you had a conversation with me. He says, I know the situation that you're in. So instead of complaining, just start telling me, thank you. You can get more out of thank you, Jesus, than you can out of help me, Lord. I just hope somebody heard that. You can get more out of thank you, Jesus, than you can out of help me, Lord. Jonah didn't ask the Lord for anything while he was in the whale's belly. Jonah was just down there saying, Lord, I thank you. The text today is a prayer of thanksgiving. If it would have been me, I would have been asking the Lord to, to open the fish's mouth. I, Lord, hurry up and get me out of this situation. But Jonah didn't ask for nothing. He just thanked the Lord. Verse 6 says, to the roots of the mountain, I sank down. The earth beneath me barred me forever. But you brought my life up from the pit. He said, when I was down and out and disobedient, the one I disobeyed still rescued me. You do know that God will rescue you. Sometimes we get in tough situations in life. 
And your attorney can't get you out. Your doctor can't get you out. Sometimes your mother and father can't do you any good. Sometimes your money and who you know can't get you out. But I'm serving a God that knows how to rescue. My God is in the business of rescue, recovery, and restoration. He'll get us out of situations that we would never be able to get our own selves out of. And I like that because God can use anything he wants to rescue us. He rescued me with a jail cell. The text says that the Lord provided a fish for Jonah. The Lord has all kind of ways of getting our attention. The Lord has all kind of ways of getting you and I to pray. As I close, verse 7 says, When my soul fainted within me, when my life was ebb ebbing away, when my life was wasting away, I remembered you, Lord. You know, it's something about memory. Memory is the fastest vehicle known to man. Memory is so fast that you can be 50 years old and you can be sitting back relaxing in a chair and your mind can instantly take you back to when you were five. It's just something about memory. You can be celebrating your wedding anniversary and your, your wife can begin to talk about your first day. day. Memory is a fast vehicle. Thank God for memory. Many of us would be in bad shape, but what God has given us in memory is to remember. And what you need to do is remember who it was with you when you didn't have anything. You need to remember how the devil tried to trick you when you disobeyed God. All you have to do is let your mind go back and remember where God brought you from. Thank God for memory. So you ought to remember the Lord today. Today is a day that you ought to remember what God has done for you. If you don't remember anything else today, you ought to let your mind reflect back on the goodness of God. Jonah, you taught me a lesson today that when God whips you, it, it will drive you to your knees. It will drive you to prayer. So every now and then I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, search me. And if you find anything that should not be in me, I need you to take it out. Take it out and strengthen me. Somebody needs to tell the Lord this morning, wherever you're worshiping in your sanctuary, Lord, whatever I got in me that's not right, that's not what you want it to be, I need you to take it out. And I need Need you to strengthen me right now. I want you to know you can still lean and then depend on the Lord, and He will never let you down. Listen, Jonah is just thanking God for everything in his prayer. He's thanking God for a fish swallowing him. Because the reality is that the fish that swallowed him is a miracle. Because if the fish had not been there, he would have drowned. So I just want you to sit back today and I want you to think about the time that God provided a miracle in your life. A way out for you. Is there anybody that knows that God will come to your rescue? You might have been down and out, could not find your way, but didn't he show up? Just in the nick of time. Mama couldn't help you. Daddy couldn't help you. But just out of nowhere, the Lord showed up and showed out. Won't he show up? Every now and then I have to tell him, thank you. Thank you for the whipping. Thank you for loving me so much that you were willing to whip me and not give up on me. Oh, Lord, thank you for whipping me and not taking my life. Oh, thank you. Is there anybody out there that has a thank you on your lips? Thank you for remembering me. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for food and clothes. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for mercy and grace. Thank you for joy and peace. Thank you. I thank you. I just thank you for the little things in life. Because every time I turn around, you just keep on blessing me. Every time I turn around, you just keep on making a way. Every time I turn around, you just keep on opening the door. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You've been so good. Oh, you made a way. You opened doors. You fed my family. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. Lord, I, I praise you. I worship you today. I lift you up. I magnify you. Oh, I, I feel all right today. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody today needs to just tell the Lord thank you. 
if he's brought you through and you're able to even sit and watch today you got something to be thankful for you got something to be grateful for I mean, God is an awesome God and so today we thank him for his son Jesus Christ who he gave us for God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son Somebody needs to tell the Lord thank you today. He's been good. If you know he's been good.